Welcome everybody. In this video I'm going to talk about the HSL panel which allows you to control individual colors in your photographs. So I'm not just going to jump down there. I'm going to use the basic panel first, make my basic adjustments, and then if a photo needs more work on individual colors I would go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and just warm this photo up just a tiny bit. Maybe increase the exposure again just a little bit. Add a little bit more contrast. Now I notice that the shadows in here are getting pretty dark. I can try increasing the shadow slider here. That will work just fine. I could also, if I can't get it localized enough, I could use the adjustment brush to get local shadow brightening. Now I'm going to come down here to the present section, add a little clarity. Vibrance and saturation will intensify color. Notice as I try to get more blue into the sky, even with vibrance, which is selective, I get too much yellow in the grass. And I could try saturation here as well. And I've got so much yellow in the grass and nowhere near enough blue in the sky. So I want to work on the colors individually in this photograph. So I'm going to come down to the HSL color black and white panel and I'm going to click on HSL. Then I'll scroll up here. I'll collapse the film strip so we have more panel space here. Now this panel allows me to work on the three different components of each color in the photograph. Now my goal with this photograph is to darken and intensify the color in the sky and also to do the same probably to a lesser extent here in the grasses. I'm going to start with luminance. Luminance is brightness and darkness. You can see that I can control the brightness and darkness of all of the potential colors that my photograph might have. So because I want to darken the blues in the photograph, I'm going to slide the blue slider to the left. I can also brighten by going in the other direction. Now this sky could be blue, but it could also be a mix of blue and aqua. I've actually also seen a little bit of purple in skies that look blue. So rather than guess or slide these sliders to see whether anything is affected or not, see I can see that purple does make a difference. Rather than guess, I'm simply going to reset these sliders and let Lightroom figure it out for me. I'm going to click on the targeted adjustment tool here and because I want to darken, I'm going to click and drag down in the photo. If I click and drag up, I'll be brightening. Now Lightroom is sampling the color underneath where I initially clicked and it's sliding the sliders for me. So I happen to click in an area of sky that's really just blue. If I click and drag over here, you're going to start seeing the aqua slider slide a little bit as well. So I've darkened the blues in the sky. Let's go ahead and darken the grasses down here. The grasses actually are a mix of orange, yellow, and green depending on where I click. So I'm just going to click and drag in various places and have it resample so that I'm darkening all of those tones. So in this case it's mostly yellow, a little bit of green, and orange based on where I clicked. Now I have to say that when I teach a live workshop and I show how you can darken the sky, I usually get one ooh or ah out of it. And then when I show the targeted adjustment tool, I get a lot of excitement. I'm sitting in front of my computer here in my office and I'm hearing no reaction whatsoever. But I'm imagining that you're really excited about hearing about the control that this gives you. Now I'm going to go to the saturation panel, which allows me to control the intensity of any of the colors in my photograph. I could slide the slider to increase the intensity of blues. I can also slide it in the opposite direction to take out color and I could go all the way to negative 100 and end up with a partial black and white photograph. I'll reset the blue though and show you that you can do the same thing with the targeted adjustment tool. So click and drag up will add saturation, click and drag down will take it out. So I'll go ahead and try to come up with something tasteful here. And then I'll do the same in the grasses. I'll click and drag up to add a little bit of saturation. Let's say that the yellow in the grass here got a little intense. I'll simply come over to the yellow slider and I'll back that off. Finally, hue allows you to shift the colors towards other colors. So as I slide the blue slider here, I'm going to shift the blue towards purple. And as I slide it in the other direction, I can shift the blue towards green. So if your partner or your colleagues or your friends are wondering why you spent so much money on this DVD series, you can show them that you've learned through this series how to create green and purple skies. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and reset this. Now all kidding aside, the hue section can be useful for shifting colors. For example, let's say I want to shift the yellows more towards green. 
I can slide the yellow slider in that direction. Now you've seen all the functionality of this panel other than black and white, but there are different views of these same tools. So if I click on all here, and let me collapse the histogram, you can see that I have the hue section, the saturation, and then the luminance. I just prefer to think ahead about which one I want to work on and work on them individually. You also have a color option here, which allows you to work on the three components of each color separately. So I could come to the blues and I can slide those sliders. Now before I conclude this video, I want to make sure that I'm being clear on one point, and that is that the HSL panel, whatever view of it you happen to use, is used for controlling colors in your photograph, not areas. So my goal with this photograph was to darken and saturate the sky, but the reason I can use the HSL panel is because the only blues in the photograph are the sky. If I had a blue car in front of this building, as I slide the blue slider or as I click and drag in blues, I would be affecting the blue car just as much as I would be affecting the sky. So this, this photo has been chosen because it's a great example of where I can achieve the local changes that I want using something other than the adjustment brush, which requires me to paint and requires a lot of work. But it's not going to work in every situation. Your colors have to be isolated to the areas that you want to work. Now another option, let's say I had this blue car here, would be to use the HSL panel because it so effectively isolates the sky and accept that my blue car is going to get too dark and too saturated. Then I could come in with the adjustment brush and back off on my settings for just the blue car. So it's another way to work. But if I have a choice between making a local change with a slider versus a local change by painting with the adjustment brush, I'm going to choose the slider every time. Okay, so this concludes the video on the HSL panel.